Awesome. Um, so today we have um, Fabi, uh, who's going to share a little bit about her journey uh, changing careers. Um, Fabi, why don't you walk us through before you ever like found out what UX was? Like, what was your your current state? You know, what what were you doing for work? How were you feeling? And kind of why did you decide to like search for something different? No, yeah, so that actually takes me back. So before I found out about UX, it takes me back to me getting into college and I was um, got into a university here locally and I was going into the graphic design program because I was always interested in design. Um, I'm going to skip over this part uh, because I ended up working as a physical therapist assistant. Okay. <laughs> um, so while I was working as a physical therapist, I had a friend who posted on her Instagram some really cool things that she was designing. And I asked her, like, hey, what are you doing? What are these things? She said, oh, these are wireframes. Oh, cool. What's that? And she told me she had taken, she was taking, she was in the process of learning UX at uh, General Assembly. So that was in 2015. And at that moment in my therapy job, I had, um, I had to change building. Something was, something interesting was going on at work mm -hmm. where lots of changes were going on. And I had this light bulb moment, like, hmm, I should have like a, a backup plan for this. And at that same time, that friend was going into UX and I was like, oh, what is UX? So I started uh, learning about UX at that time, like what in the world is it? But I didn't get super deep into it. It was just like, oh, there it is. Okay, cool. And then I um, got my work situation straightened out 2015 years went by and I just had UX in the back of my mind um fast forward again 2020 pandemic times I was like I need to take a break from healthcare I need to do something else um I had been doing some freelancing like teaching English online uh, for about a year at the time, but I was thinking, hmm, you know, I'm I'm always into designing uh, something creative, and that UX that was in the back of my mind came to the front. So I started uh, searching more about it, and I found Ev Academy through Instagram because I was really active in Instagram. And I said, you know what, I have time now. I'm taking a break from healthcare. Let me check yeah. it out, and I think I'm gonna let's see if I like it. I said, let's just go for it, and that's how I got into Ev Academy. Nice. Did you consider, um, did you consider doing like a traditional education route, like a, another degree or a master's degree or nope. like self-teaching or were, were you, you like kind of knew I'm like a, a course yeah. guy, guided person in terms oh, of. Oh yeah. Life. Yeah. Yeah. For okay. sure. No, I did not ever consider like a, a degree. Nope. I was not going back into university or college or anything. Yeah. Um, okay. I considered learning on my own. Uh, I had been watching some YouTube videos. There are a lot of free, you know, courses out there. Yep. There's a lot of written articles, free courses, but I didn't feel like um, it was enough for me in the sense, like, I need some companionship or I need some motivation or I need someone to get me on track and hence mentorship. Yep. So when I watched the Up Academy, uh, the intro video, and the way that actually you talked about it, I said, okay, well, this course has, it sounds like it has what I need. I still wasn't sure what I was getting into. Even when I signed up for the course, I was like, I wonder what I'm getting into. I wasn't yeah. super clear on it, but um, I was just went for it because I had the time. Yeah, no, that's great. Yeah, I, I self-taught uh, UX design to myself, obviously, um, back in the day. It was so hard. <laughs> I was like the whole time I was like I don't know if I'm even like swimming in the right direction right? I'm just like yeah. watching a bunch of YouTube videos um which is why I decided to to create the program so awesome you it was you know fairly easy decision for you you joined the program um how did you feel going through foundations um this was what was this 2020 or 2021 now I think it was 2021 yeah. Okay. 20. So yeah. like early 2021, I was like trying to self-learn, but to, to that point, there was just so much material. And I think in 2020, just a lot more material started coming out because people also had time. So they were putting stuff yeah. out there and it was hard to follow like, okay, what comes first, right? What do I learn yeah. first? So I found that the course really helped to, to get that in place. 
but I'm gonna be yeah I'm gonna be honest it was not easy for me because at the time Av Academy had a lot of uh, written material so it's a lot of yeah reading and for me yes I love reading but when it's something new I just had such a hard time I was like I have to focus let me do this for 15 minutes yeah. and see if I can concentrate and then keep going but it was hard for me at the time like I'm such um I learned through videos uh and watching stuff being done or actually doing it but yeah, I think um, I did when, appreciate that part when you started we were like six months in like our academy was a baby back then and um we had a lot of written content now I mean you know because you're you're part of the Owl Academy mm-hmm. family now but we we have so much more like we have a video yes. almost every lesson you know the activity outlines the rubrics like it's it's a whole different ball game now um but you were able to do it back then which I think you know <laughs> shows shows a lot on on your end so how long did it take you to finish the course you know some people finish pretty quickly back then we had like no time you could have finished whenever you know it could have taken six months or <laughs> however long years. you wanted to <laughs> Um, now, uh, and I'll, I'll timestamp this April, 2023, we do have 16 weeks of unlimited mentorship. So you have to finish within those four months. People finish much faster. Some people take about four months. Um, but back then, you know, folks could take as long as they wanted. We weren't like, you know, rushing anyone through, through anything. So what, what did that look like for you? Were, did you finish pretty quickly or did you take your time and kind of like go through it in a couple of months? Yeah, I'm someone who just generally, my like law is like, I take my time doing stuff because I want to like step in the right direction. I think the the first couple of modules, so like module um, module one where we're identifying a problem, uh, module two and three, they were really fun for me because it was about research and I love talking to people. Um, so those were okay. Once I got to module four and five, those were particularly very, very difficult for me because they were going more into the, um, after the UX is going into the visual design. And so I think yeah. I got stuck on module five the longest. I want to say maybe a couple, like if I was doing the rest, you know, weekly, two weeks at a normal pace, I think I got stuck on module five for a couple months. And that was like the, where, uh, where I took my time. Um, so yeah. one thing that was interesting for me at that time, I think I wanted to learn more about the style guide and design systems, but I wanted to really take it in and absorb it some more. Um, since, yeah, uh, yeah it, I, I don't know. For me, I like the the abstract concept of like information architecture and things like that. And I'm not, stu- I like UI, but I'm not like super, super passionate about it. So I think that's also why it took me a little longer. I wanted to kind of ease myself into it and start to like it more yeah no that makes sense um so you finished foundations um we had did we have cj back then we did right yep we did i think i also took my time building the the first um piece of my portfolio so i was probably stuck on module five and six the longest yeah yeah trying to get some things straight (laughs) yeah it, what's interesting too, and I, I'm pretty sure you were one of these people, like sometimes, you know, folks want to get everything like perfect. They're like, mm-hmm. this is, you know, this will get me <laughs> my job. And it's hard to explain to, to you all, right, that like the first case study is like, it, it's kind of practice, right? Like you should take it as practice and it's not going to be perfect. And what we do now is we get people to finish the program, start CJ. And then if there's any tweaks that need to be made, we help, we help you make them after the fact in CJ so that you don't get, to, like, you can look at those screens, man, that activity 17 high fives, like <laughs> you can be on that activity literally for months, tweaking and tweaking and tweaking. And that's you starting out me as, you know, an experienced designer, like anybody could spend so much time on that. So we're trying to like create new processes so that like, you don't spend so much time on it. And we just come back to it once you've learned new skills, you know, through CJ and stuff. Um, yeah. But anyways, it's a so big you brain finished, moment <laughs> looking yeah. back. I'm like, oh, wow, I learned so much. So yeah. relatively fast, honestly, it's still felt like 16 weeks is super quick. So I like, I give props to those people who, who can yeah. learn, like take in all of that so fast. Yeah. So you finished your portfolio with your first case study from foundations um, did you join CJ right away? Did you take a break? Did you think like, I'm going to try and do this on my own before I join CJ? Like, what did that like post foundations, uh, you know, moment feel like for you? 
Um, I'm pretty sure I, I, in my mind, I wanted to, to join right away. I'm pretty sure I did. Maybe it took a two week. I, I don't remember. But I wanted to just keep going because if I took a break, that it doesn't, no, I need to keep the ball, the ball rolling. Otherwise, yeah. breaks are not good for me. So I think I just went ahead and went for CJ. I was really excited to work on the, on the actual client projects. Right. That's what really um, attracted me. Uh, one side note that during foundations and also another reason why I was on module five and six for so long is because I was, I think, working on my own website at the time with the teaching. Um, and so I was like trying to apply what I was learning in foundations to that as well. So I kind of had two yeah. things going on there. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you joined CJ. How many projects did you do? Do you remember like what industries they were in? How was that experience of like working with other people? You know, sometimes it can be really great. Sometimes it mm -hmm. like, you know, explodes to tons of different personalities in one room. Um, yeah, what yeah, was that experience cool. like for you? Yeah, um, it's cool. I like to to see how I can manage with different personalities. Uh, the first project that we did was with a company um, that was offering a product to developers. So I think with that one in particular, I was really interested in the language that they use. They used a lot of like terms, uh, acronyms that I was like, what on earth is like, I learned about APIs from them. And then I was like, this is so cool. I'm going to keep learning about this. I like a development language. Yeah. Um, then there was another really fun for me project because I was so close to the issue uh, about a company that was um, creating or had created this uh, like web portal slash app for wellness professionals. So it was like, a, I don't know if people know what italki is, but you go in there to learn languages and also teach them. So they were doing that, but for wellness. And another cool one was, um, let's see if I can remember that acronym, uh, NLP something. And then it was about yeah. social media listening. So that was another really interesting thing. It just learning about the different industries was really fun for me. Cool. So did you do three CJ projects while you were in CJ or did you do more? Uh, oh, let's see. I well, like I mentioned three like, right now. I think I yeah. did four. Yeah. yeah, I was like, you were one four. of the ones that had like a full portfolio. <laughs> like I remember. Yeah. Um, I was like, I just need to do all of this. Yeah. I need the, the more I can take. Yeah. Yeah. Um, awesome. Do you feel like you learned in those projects? Like were there, you know, not only were you learning about new industries, you've got like a lot of different industries actually, which is great. Um, did you feel like you learned more about design or were you just like practicing? Like how, you know, do you feel the like learning experience mm. of those projects was like? Ooh, that's a good question because for the first, uh, project I was, yeah, more focused on like the design, like the wireframing and the UI aspect. And I think for the, uh, for the other projects, I was actually super focused more on the process itself. Like I actually e even, um, integrated some more research, like extra, and then also kind of managing our our team and trying to trying to lead our team. So that was really the interesting part for me with those last, I think, two projects was yeah, more like more process the, and management. The leadership role. Yeah, that's that's great. Um, so you have this full portfolio, tons of projects. Yeah. How is how is the job search for you? Um, how long did it take you to find a job? Uh, we know it's it's a roller coaster, right? Like some high yeah. moments, you apply to hundreds of jobs and you get all these rejections, low moments, right? Like there's there's a lot going on. Walk us through like length time, maybe numbers of jobs you applied to. How'd you feel? Good interviews, bad interviews. How, how was that for you? Cool. Let's see. So I'm pretty sure it took me about six months and I kind of divided up my own job search into two phases. Phase one was I was not confident at all. I was like, let me just stay in CJ for another year. I'm just kidding. And then the phase two was when I... I had to do a lot of inner work, to be honest. Like, I just had to build my confidence level up and kind of align, like, what do you really want? Why do, Why are you going for this job? Like, I had to really set those clearly in my head. Like, what are your goals? Um, and then alignment. And then phase two was like, okay, I, I actually feel ready. And that's really actually when I started seeing more results. I also got help from Up Academy because um, y'all were... Uh, piloting that program where you help us 
apply, which was great. Um, and then I, from that, I saw, okay, so there's something that I'm probably not doing enough in my own applications that I need to need to do. So I kind of tweaked it based on those recommendations as well. Uh, so I got a ton of calls from recruiters. So that was working. LinkedIn was working. I updated my entire LinkedIn profile, uh, keywords, all of that good stuff. Yeah. It takes a long time and it is very tedious and it's not fun, but yeah. you have to do it. Um, so LinkedIn, I was sending letters like to recruiters like, hey, your company um, does this. I've done this. Here's a link to, I sent them a link to a direct case study so the recruiters could see it. Yeah. I got a couple of phone calls from that. So that was a, a great strategy that I learned from the daily calls as well. Yeah. And uh, what well, my going, am I veering off or is this good? No, this Let's is see. good. This is great. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of those steps that I took and then, yeah, I was emailing, you know, companies. I don't think I got a reply from any of them. I got a reply from recruiters. I got to talk to recruiters, so a ton of phone calls. And then I got a couple of, um, let's say like three step, four step, five step interviews. Um, I can't say I had a bad experience with any of them. I think it was just like a ton of practice. I would practice with uh, fellow CJ grads. We would interview each other. I practiced with mentors. I was just constantly interviewing. I, I had a dry spell where I got no interviews past the recruiter stage. So I was just like, you know what? If they are not going to give me interviews, I'm just going to interview with all of y'all and I'm going to attract interviews. And so that's what happened. And then on the second stage, I, I got the ball rolling again. So also a, a possible explanation why I stopped getting those interviews was because I kept on tweaking my, my portfolio and my, I was like, what are you doing? But that's just me. So I kept tweaking my portfolio in that in that era. So they might have seen something not so great in there while I was updating. But no, in the yes. end, after six months, um, I went through a startup uh, that got me through like, five, I don't remember, like five-ish rounds. And another, no, it was two startups that I went through final rounds. I did a design challenge. That was great. Didn't yeah. end up getting the job. Someone else from CJ did though. So congrats to them. That was awesome. And I ended up getting hired at an agency and it was on the first interview. So first interview, they asked me to present a case study. I did. And they were like, oh, great. We want you in our company. Nice. And you're still there? I'm still there. Yep. Awesome. And it is an interesting one. Yep. Agency. Yeah. Yeah, so just to to kind of summarize, I, I remember that it was taking you right a little bit longer. And yeah, I think at like, certain points you were like a little discouraged. And I was like, stop touching your portfolio, just keep applying. Like just stop. Yeah, I kept um, like rearranging my portfolio. <laughs> yeah, I think and that's a mistake everyone makes. You're like, I'm not getting traction. It must be my portfolio. And most of the time it's your resume. If if it's anything, it's your resume. Other times it's just, you know, there's there's a lot of folks applying. So you have to make sure you're applying to the right jobs, like things posted within 24 hours, right? Like applying to bigger companies that less people are applying to, not doing a bunch of easy applies, which everyone else is doing, right? So um, that's great. And you eventually got that offer. You're at the agency. Tell us a little bit about agency life. Like, do, are you working mm -hmm. with different clients? Like, what, what does that look like? And maybe if, if you want to define the difference between in-house versus agency for, for those uh, listening that don't know. Sure. Uh, the way I understand it is yeah. an in-house designer is working with one company. So they have their one their one mission. Maybe they have a couple pro uh, products, but they have their one mission and usually like one product if they're small. And in-house is like you're working for them with that mission and one product. Uh, versus agency, which is where I'm at, agency life, is we are working with other clients. Um, and like Moment Studio, right? Moment Studio, working with different clients, different missions, different products. And our agency focuses on uh, government clients, federal clients. So uh, three of us, 
Oh, another thing is I wanted, I did not want to be the sole UX designer at any company. And so I had that, like, while I was applying, I was like, let me be in the team. Um, in this agency, I was, I think, I think I was hired as a full-time, I think they had a previous person, but I, when I got in there and I started working, I was the only full-time UX designer with that title. Uh, but soon, uh, now we are three. We're really nice. four of us who, but four of us do UX. So nice. that's cool. And uh, so three of us are working with a larger organization, which is nice because in that larger organization, they kind of do like an agile e waterfall ish e process. So we get to be embedded with their teams. They have a lot of um, several development teams. Um, it is a little bit of a maze to kind of find our way through like, okay, who is the product owner for this thing? Who's the business person yeah. for this? We're trying to figure out who the contacts are. That's what's interesting in this one. And then in the agency um, ourselves, one of the projects that I saw the opportunity for to undertake was actually establishing a UX research and design process internally. So working yeah. with the lead uh, UX designer for that project, which is super interesting. And I hope I have more news to share about it in the next coming months. That's awesome. Yeah, it's interesting when you're working at an agency, you you have all these clients, right? So like every couple of months or every couple of years, you're, it's like your new job, right? Without having to change <laughs> jobs, um, which, which is great. Um, and I, I think you were talking about this project in our, our like graduate call, right? Yesterday, mm -hmm. yesterday you were talking about the processing, cool. Um, yeah. Awesome. Is there anything else you want to share about your job now? Anything you think might be helpful to those listening before we close out with one final question? Yeah. Um, so specifically in this job, like the the kind of skills that I'm learning in this one is um, even even a little bit non-related to UX. Although they are, they should be related in this. It's like business development stuff, um, more businessy things. So I'm I downloaded a bunch of books to read about that really cool a lot of information architecture and the agency really supports us in education so i'm learning a lot more about that as well organizing messes that's really cool for me um for so advice for for who for those who want to start ux or what yeah i'll i'll give you the the wrap -up question so the the question is for those listening that have not yet decided to take the leap into starting to learn ux right they're mm -hmm. you know maybe they're you with ux kind of back here in, in, back. in 2015 right kind of yeah. they they know it might be for them they just haven't decided yet do you have any advice for them um if, if they're listening right now mm, gotcha so if you okay if you are not sure if it's right for you or not definitely talk to someone in the industry like uh, go do your own little interviews i would say hey call me up i'll tell you my experience as well with more details if you want and yeah if you have a friend in ux if you know someone who knows someone if you find someone on instagram if you find someone on adp list which is a uh, free mentorship and you ask yeah. them what is your job like finding out what their i'm not going to say day to day i don't have a day to day week to week yeah. <laughs> what your week to week is like at the job um i think that'll give people more um, you know, pros and cons. Is this for me? Is this not for me? Yeah. It might be for you. It might not be for you. It just, it's, a, it's a very hmm, flowy yeah, career. It's a good, it's, a good it's, way to, yeah. yeah, it's a very, if you are a person who likes structure and doing this way, that way you might get frustrated, but if you're someone who's like more creative, flowy, sure. You're, you're going to love it. Problem yeah. solving, difficult stuff, challenges. You're going to like it. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. We have, um, we also suggest looking at like a day in the life type videos mm -hmm. on YouTube. If you're somebody that's a little bit shy and doesn't want to like, you know, be, oh, be DMing people, um, we have in our YouTube channel, we have a ton of grad panels. So it, they're like these sessions with a lot of folks like Fabi here who have gone through the program and talk about what their experience looks like day to day. Um, and we also just recently launched a, a free course. So it's a free three hour long course that just goes through like, what is the process? What are the tools? Like what computer requirements you need? What are the roles? Like very intro stuff, but nice. in one place. So you don't spend 30 hours watching YouTube videos. You can just like go through some, some short videos that I've recorded. Um, 
but yeah, or you feel free to, you know, reach out. I, I mean, if Avi offered, I think she might regret it, but <laughs> um, feel free to, to reach out to folks. ADP list is a great resource as well. Um, but yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing this. This was great. Um, wishing you really the best in, in your career, but thank you for joining us today. Yeah, thank you for having me. Awesome.